Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're taking a look at this. This is a cheap unbranded Chinese motherboard that turned up in the post today. And well, I wanted to review it to see what sort of features it has, how good it is, and whether it actually turns on without melting my whole house down. Now when searching online for a motherboard, you may be tempted to sort by lowest price first, which is completely understandable because everyone wants to get the best price they can. A lot of the times though, if you do this on certain online auction and selling sites, you'll find a lot of listings are based in Hong Kong, for example, and these products are often unnamed or unbranded, such is the case with this one right here. So let's get it out of the packaging. This is the whole packaging, this is everything it came with, and this. See what it's like, turn it on if it does such a thing, and uh, test it out. So let's get into it. Actually, you know what, I'm going to do it right here, and I'm going to start with this back plate. It came with a lovely looking back plate, as you can see. What's funny about this is that a back plate is, is what it is. It's a simple device that goes at the back of your PC case and protects your motherboard from all the elements, dust, stuff like that. It also looks a lot better than having a big hole at the back of your case. Some call it an IO shield. I call it a back plate. Call it whatever you like. In this case, ah, ah. In this case, it's very sharp and feels a little cheaper than ones you might get with different boards, but it's no big deal. It does the job, I'm sure. Look what it's done to my thumb. Ah, silly thing. Right, next up, we have the accessories. Th this, this is it. <laughs> this is what the motherboard came with. One SATA cable, although it is well packaged, I'll admit. And it's of a decent length, which is always a bonus. Next up, we have the actual board itself. Very nicely enclosed in bubble wrap and it's also in an anti-static bag, which is more than I can say for some sellers online, who, when I buy used products like this, always just wrap it up in a plastic supermarket bag, something like that. It doesn't really matter, but it's nice to see an anti-static bag here, just to be sure. Pulling the board out. Oh. oh, we had a little protective sponge on the bottom there. And here it is. It's pretty much the same size as my hand, give or take. And it actually looks quite cool. It's a very small compact board and would look great in any system. I like the colour of it. All black finish there with a few white and silver bits here and there. And it seems to be, you know, pretty feature rich in the way of connectivity, stuff like that. But let's take a more in-depth look at this thing. See what we've got in and around the board. Try and work out how much memory it supports, what sort of CPUs it supports based on the 1155 socket as well. Then hook it up to a test rig, see if it fires up, and uh, test it for a couple of days to see if it actually lasts that long. Of course, you guys get the pleasure of skipping ahead of that process. So, let's get it onto the test bench, assess the features, but I'll see you in a minute. This thing is actually really nice. So it looks the part, but that means nothing if it doesn't work. Let's start with the processor support. This is an H61 board and supports second and third gen 1155 Intel processors. As far as I can tell, so far anyway, because this is according to a few different aftermarket sellers of the product. I'll be testing mine with a second gen i5 a little later on. The same uncertainty initially applies with the amount of RAM. After a quick search, it seems this supports up to 16 gigs, so you can use two 8 gig sticks of DDR3. The maximum supported speed isn't immediately stated either, and there was no manual included. Actually, there was a sheet of paper that labelled each connection on the board, but that was it. For the graphics, we have two possible solutions. One PCI Express 16 slot and one PCI Express 1 slot. This isn't really any different to what you'd expect from a branded budget board. There are also the usual fan headers and USB connections scattered around the board as well. I mentioned earlier that we had quite a few connections here too, but as far as I can tell, I don't think we have any USB 3 ports, and there's no USB 3 case header here either, which isn't the end of the world, but I am quite happy to see an HDMI port. So then, it's time to see if it actually works. 
To do that I'll be pairing it with a quad core i5-3330 and a single stick of DDR3 memory. As you can see I've put together a quick makeshift test rig here so let's see if it powers on. It seems to be working fine but one thing I did have an issue with was the USB ports as they didn't want to work at first. This didn't matter what peripheral I tried, nothing I could do would get these working. I did restart the system a couple of times after whereby my keyboard was picked up, so I was able to run through normal setup and jump into some longer term testing. It was nice to see that my 1600MHz RAM was also recognised. And the BIOS, as expected, is the basic American Megatrends layout. Now for the testing, I did what I do every day of the week. Play a few games, edit a few videos, and perform a few stress tests. After a couple of days usage, the board was still running fine though I'll have to keep it in a secondary system for a much longer period of time to get a better idea of reliability. It seems so far to all be working, though there is a slight nervousness about hooking all your other what might be more expensive components up to this at first. Considering this, the motherboard is a pretty central part to any PC build. So you're probably thinking, is it a good idea to buy a motherboard like this one? Well, you can't really guarantee exactly where it was produced, who it was made by, and there's no way of knowing whether the capacitors used on such a board are of super cheap quality. There's no way of judging how long its lifespan will be. But that could be said with a lot of products. Now I know other YouTubers, uh, tech YouTubers, have tested these out too and are pretty happy with the results. You can also get various different socket ones. You can get X58 based boards um, that support Xeons. And I know a few people who have purchased them and still have them in their systems to this day. The thing is, this board wasn't really much cheaper than you could pick up a secondhand 1155 socket board for on places like eBay. So I don't really think you're gaining anything by going with something that's totally unbranded that you may not feel entirely comfortable using either. I have to say though that, you know, it, it does the job, it seems to do the job, it's very basic, but it works, and if you really wanted to opt for something super cheap, you was on a very tight budget, you could buy one of these if you also wanted something brand new, but like I say, I think your best bet would be getting a second hand board um, that comes from a more, let's say, reliable manufacturer because there are plenty of 1155 boards about. When it comes to other sockets, as I said, I know other people have used these with Xeons before, and they still seem to be going pretty strong. So it's a bit of a gamble. It's up to you whether you want to take that risk, but just know that there was also no specified warranty with this thing, no other accessories, no drivers. Just It's just very basic. It is what it is. It works, but it may not seem entirely worth it to most of you. Though, as I said, it is cheap, and that to some people is all that matters. But that's all I can say. Thank you. This has been the Cheap Chinese Motherboard Unboxing and Review video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you have one of these in your system and how it's worked out for you so far. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you, as always, for watching, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.